So there are six NFL franchises that are in search of a brand new head coach as I speak today. And I'm going to rank all of the head coach openings from best to worst. I'll go in order and I'll tell you which head coaching jobs new head coaches out there should really be banging on the door to pursue. Let, let, let's start from the top. What is the most attractive head coaching job heading into the 2021 NFL offseason? To me, the Jacksonville Jaguars are the best head coaching opportunity for a brand new head coach. I put them number one. Why do I say that? Well, the Jaguars, they've got the first overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft, and there's some really good quarterbacks in this draft, okay? Obviously, Trevor Lawrence, generational talent. Justin Fields, generational talent. Might not be as polished as Trevor Lawrence, but he's really, really good. And also, you look at Trey Lance, he's super-duper talented. You look at Zach Wilson, he's pretty talented as well, even though I'm not super high on him. But the bottom line is, you get your choice. You get to choose between Lawrence, Fields, Zach Wilson. You can do whatever you want with the number one overall pick. And a lot of people think that Trevor Lawrence, the guy that most people think is going to go number one overall, they believe that he's the he might be the best prospect since Andrew Luck. So, look, you can pick your quarterback with the first overall pick. And if you're, if you're not sold on one of these quarterbacks, you know, if you, let's say you maybe like a guy like Zach Wilson, you know, you like. Trevor Lawrence, but you maybe want to build the roster with more picks. Well, guess what? There's going to be some teams out there that are going to be willing to give you a ton of draft capital for that number one overall pick. They may even throw in a Pro Bowl level player for that number one overall pick. So you can get a King's Ransom if you trade away that number one overall pick. Let's say you trade with, I don't know, the Falcons. Let's say the Falcons want to get Trevor Lawrence. They got the number five overall pick. You very well could get a star quarterback and a bunch of other assets, you know, if you trade away that pick to Atlanta, okay? Not to mention, the Jacksonville Jaguars also have the 22nd overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft and two second-round picks. So they've got a ton of draft capital, not to mention Gardner Minshew is on the roster right now. I think Gardner Minshew is a solid quarterback, but obviously probably not the future of Jacksonville. But guess what? He's a very good trading asset. If you have Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields that you're, that you're going to draft and you want to move on from Gardner Minshew, that's very possible because I guarantee you there are some teams out there that will give you some draft capital for Gardner Minshew because he's a pretty solid quarterback that's very accurate. Not to mention, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they got millions among millions of dollars of cap space. You can spend money in free agency. You've got a good young roster. Well, not necessarily a good young roster because the team only won one game, but you've got a roster full of a lot of young talent. James Robinson, DJ Chark, LaVisca Chenault. I could go on and on. This was the youngest team in the NFL in 2020, the Jacksonville Jaguars. So it's a lot of young talent, not a lot of bad contracts, and expectations are super duper low. This team won one game this past season, okay? And I put the Jaguars number one on this list. Number two to me is the Houston Texans, just for the simple fact that you get a chance to coach Deshaun Watson, who to me right now is a top five quarterback in all football, and that should not be up for debate. Deshaun Watson, he's amazing, he's super talented, he's a great leader, and look, the thing about Deshaun Watson is this, I firmly believe if you just consistently hold teams to under 30 points on most Sundays, Deshaun Watson can get you 10 to 11 wins each season. As long as you fix that defense, you are going to win a lot of games. Will you have a lot of draft capital in 2021? No, you will not. But in 2022, you get your first and second round pick back. The bottom line is, as long as you can come in in year number one and establish a culture, win the locker room over, Win more games than last year, which is not a hard thing to do because you only the, the Houston Texans only won four games in 2020. So as long as you can win anywhere from seven to nine games in your first season in Houston, I think that's a success. You know, you can buy some time by year number two, year number three. You start to get some of those draft picks back. You start to get more cap space. They can start to make more moves. Okay, so as long as you believe in what you're preaching as a head coach, as long as you believe you can win over that locker room and quickly just allow this team to compete 
and be in games, at least in year, in year number one, I think you're safe to go. You got a star left tackle in Lerme Tonto. You got a very good young safety in Justin Reed on your defense. You still got J.J. Watt. You got Brandon Cooks at wide receiver. You, you, get, you have an opportunity to re-sign Will Fuller. The bottom line is this team has some talent on the roster. So Houston, they're at number two for me. Now the LA Chargers are at number three for me. They're the third best head coaching opportunity in my opinion. I would have put them number two, but the specific reason why I did not do that is for one reason and one reason only. The LA Chargers play in a division with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. Andy Reid is one of the three best head coaches in all football. And Patrick Mahomes, he's the best player in the sport right now. Best player in all football, best quarterback in all football. That should not be up for debate right now, okay? But the LA Chargers, they've got they've got a lot of good pieces. You know, they really do. And it starts with Justin Herbert, their star quarterback who just had a sensational rookie year. I'm all in on Justin Herbert as I speak today. The guy has a cannon for an arm. He can make all the throws. He has one of the five best arms in the entire NFL already. He's a physical specimen. He can move around inside the pocket, outside the pocket. A very good athlete. He can make all the throws. If you can just hold teams to under 30 points on most Sundays, very similar to what I said about Deshaun Watson, just get teams off the field, get the ball back to Justin Herbert, you're going to win 10 to 12 games every single year. And you look at this Chargers roster, they have a lot of talent at the wide receiver position. You got Keenan Allen, you got Mike Williams, Jalen Guyton at tight end. You got Hunter Henry, if you can bring him back on a reasonable deal. Austin Eckler's a pretty good running back. Derwin James, when healthy, is one of the three best safeties in all football. Joey Boza is one of the best pass rushers in the entire NFL. Jerry Tillery is a very good defensive tackle that's up and, that's up and coming. He's a good young player, definitely. And the LA Chargers last year, they were top 10 in both offense and defense. All this team really needs is a stable head coach. And it's not crazy to think next year they could be a playoff team in 2021. This team has a lot of talent. And also the LA Chargers are a big, large market. Free agents will want to come and play in sunny Los Angeles, California. I put them at number three. Number four for me is the Detroit Lions. Look, the Detroit Lions are not the most attractive job compared to the Jaguars opportunity, the Texans opportunity, the Chargers opportunity. I think that those three coaching opportunities are, are, are really good opportunities. You know, they're slam dunk opportunities, but I think that if you're head coach of the Detroit Lions, it's not all that bad of a head coaching job. You got Matthew Stafford on the roster at quarterback, and Matthew Stafford's a veteran, and you know what you're going to get. Matthew Stafford is one of the 10 most talented quarterbacks in all football, arguably maybe a top 10 quarterback, um, but at worst, a, a very good tier two quarterback. You can win a lot of games with Matthew Stafford if you put a good roster around him. And Matthew Stafford, he's still only 32 years old. He's still got a lot of good football left in him. Not to mention DeAndre Swift, Carrion Johnson. They're two pretty good running backs. You got Kenny Galladay. You got Marvin Jones. You got Muhammad Sanu. You got TJ Hawkinson as your tight end. You know, Sanu, Galladay, and Jones obviously are wide receivers. But when you look at the Detroit Lions offense on paper, they have some talent, no doubt about it. And not to mention, the Detroit Lions have the number seven overall pick in the upcoming 2021 NFL Draft. So there is potential you could draft a quarterback if one is there, or you potentially could trade away Matthew Stafford and maybe move up in the draft to go grab a quarterback. You know, maybe a team is willing to, you know, let you trade up. You know, you could trade down. There's a lot of flexibility as far as what you have to work with with your, with your draft capital because you have the number seven overall pick, and you've got some talented players on this roster. Now, this defense is not very good right now. This defense needs a lot of work, and I mean a lot of work. This defense was historically bad in 2020, and you do play in, the, in a division with Aaron Rodgers, but I do think that expectations are not as high in Detroit as they would be in a big-time market like, you know, with the Jets. So, Look, if you can just be a head coach that comes in, establishes your culture, and if you're the real deal, 
I think you I think you can buy some time in Detroit. I think you can do some special things with this roster if you play your cards right. So Detroit, they're number four for me. Number five is the Atlanta Falcons. Look, this division in a, in a couple of years definitely could be up for grabs because you look at this division right now. You got Tom Brady, Drew Brees. They're awesome. They're great, but they're old. They're not going to be playing in the next three to five years, I guarantee you. So once Tom Brady and Drew Brees leave that division, that division automatically becomes wide open, okay? Carolina is a pretty good up-and-coming team, but I do think that, like I said, this division could very well be wide open in the next couple of years once those two Hall of Fame quarterbacks retire. Not to mention the Atlanta Falcons have the number five overall pick in the upcoming draft. So you can draft the quarterback, you can trade down, you can do a lot of things with that number five overall pick. You still got Matt Ryan on the roster. I've given Matt Ryan, you know, a lot of flack over the years. I've been critical of Matt Ryan, but Matt Ryan is a stable veteran quarterback. He's been to a Super Bowl. He's a former league MVP. You kind of know what you're going to get from Matt, from Matt Ryan. He doesn't miss games. He's a reliable veteran quarterback. That can still win you some ball games. You still got Julio Jones on the roster. Calvin Ridley is a star wide receiver that's definitely, you know, developing and getting better and better every single year. Russell Gage is pretty good as well. And it's pretty clear to me that when Dan Quinn was fired, this team got significantly better. Okay. And Arthur Blank, the owner of the Atlanta Falcons, he's pretty patient. I think that honestly, he might be a tad bit too patient because I do think that he held on to Dan Quinn as a head coach way too long. But if I'm a new head coach coming in and looking at this opportunity, I want every single opportunity to get things right. I don't want a, I don't want an owner or a general manager that's going to fire me after two seasons when I'm not getting things right. I want ownership that's going to stick with me through thick and thin and support me and give me every opportunity to establish my culture, bring in my guys, and get this thing fixed, okay? So I think that Arthur Blank being patient definitely is going to allow the Falcons to be somewhat of an attractive job, but while I look at the grand scheme of things, I have the Falcons ranked fifth on my list because they've got the oldest roster in the National Football League, and there's not a whole lot of cap space, okay? Right now, the New Orleans Saints, they got the least amount of cap space. The Eagles are next. And right in front of them is the Atlanta Falcons, the third worst cap situation in the NFL right now. So it's an old roster, a lot of bad contracts, but it's still a very good job opportunity in my opinion. Last but not least, the New York Jets are at number six for me, and I would not touch the New York Jets at all. This is not an opportunity that I would want at all if I'm an up-and-coming head coach. Sure, you do have the number two overall pick. You could do a lot of things with that number two overall pick, maybe trade down, you know, things like that. You've got cap space. You've got Sam Darnold still on the roster. If you believe in Sam Darnold's talent, you can keep him, build around him, use that number two overall pick to build a good roster, hopefully to get a good impactful player. Maybe you trade down. Quentin Williams is pretty talented. Denzel Mims is pretty talented. But I want no part of the Jets division. No part of it. You're in a division with the Buffalo Bills, the Miami Dolphins, and the New England Patriots. And those teams have really, really good head coaches. Bill Belichick, he's an elite head coach. Brian Flores very well could be an elite head coach in the next two to three seasons. And Sean McDermott, I can say the same thing about him. You can make the argument right now, Sean McDermott, Bill Belichick, and Brian Flores are three of the top 10 head coaches right now. That's not a crazy statement to make, people, okay? So I don't want to go against Flores, McDermott, and Belichick twice a year. Not with this roster, not with this dysfunctional organization. Keep in mind, Bill Belichick resigned with the New York Jets a long time ago. He saw the dysfunction. He saw the writing on the wall. And... The five other teams ahead of the Jets on my list have something they don't, okay? The Jaguars have the number one overall pick. The Houston Texans have Deshaun Watson. The Jet, the New York Jets don't. The Chargers have Justin Herbert. Do the Jets? Nope. The Lions at least have Matthew Stafford. And the Atlanta Falcons, they have a much more talented roster. They got better players. So if I'm a head coach looking to 
you know, ingratiate myself in the NFL for the first time, I want no pro I want no parts of the New York Jets. This is a bad this is a bad roster. This is a bad head coaching opportunity. I would not touch the New York Jets if I was a brand new head coach trying to make my way in the NFL. So in order, I believe the Jaguars are the best coaching opportunity. Up next, I go to Texans at number two, Chargers number three, Lions number four, Falcons number five, and last but not least, the worst head coaching opportunity, an opportunity that I would not want to touch, is the New York Jets. So that's my list right there. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Alert Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. This podcast is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. And I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows. Or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Alert Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day, and I'm out.